Awesome. We are now recording. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the interim CalExt and CalConnect meeting. I'm just going to share the slides now and let's get started. Has that, that's gone black again, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that is pathetic. I've shifted from, from my big screen so that I could have this, this little thing here and it's just gone black again. All right. You'll have to open the slides yourself. And I'll oh, tell you what page we're on. So difficult. I know technology. How does it even work? <laughs> All right, slides link uh, put them here. is there. Okay. Well, that gives us more space to see each other's faces, I guess, as we chat. In terms of running this meeting, I don't expect that we're going to have to do an official queue as such i think just talk and if we discover that it's getting too difficult to manage then we'll do a speaker queue but otherwise we're a small enough group that it should just be fine to chat amongst ourselves um heading over to page two on the slides it's just details of how to participate we're all here so clearly everyone's worked that out um page three on the slides is the note well this is our this is an IETF meeting, so we are operating under the note well. All the standard IPR, etc., rules apply. This is public. It is being recorded. Notes will be published, etc. So don't say anything you don't want the world to know. Slide four is the agenda. Um, start with a brief agenda bash and just a little, I think we need to work out how we're going to get our work done over the rest of this year, given that we don't have the meetings as a forcing function to make us actually get things done. Um, just flagging that now, we'll probably talk about it at the end as well when we go through the milestones, how we're going to make sure the work progresses uh, with the group that we have. I've also put a link in slide four to the minutes of the previous meeting that we had at ITF 106 in Singapore. Um, throughout these slides, I've put notes of the action points that we decided for the various documents there to remind us what we're supposed to have done by now um, and hopefully get the discussion started. Is there any other agenda bash, anything people want to add to our agenda? Hi, this is Henk. Uh, Hi, Henk. Onhofer Institute Germany and author, a co author of CDDL. So I, uh, I'm here basically for the JS calendar thingy, the Jake jazz card stuff so but unfortunately i am only available until the next top of the hour so i assume this fits nicely <laughs> but uh if it is does not could you squeeze the uh, js calendar stuff in before the top of the hour yeah it, it should be in in this hour for sure okay you can shift the series down i mean so we can take that yeah later. all right so we'll do event pub first and then straight to js calendar Um, I noticed that I'm still the only person whose name's in the etherpad, so oh no, please do go on huh? and put your names in. Um, That's not what I saw. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's at least five of us in there now. Wow. Then it's not updating for me. Yay, technology, <laughs> all our tools. And actually, I, I don't it. see I don't see your name in there, Ron. So maybe we're yeah. on a different. Are different you on a different? You have a different etherpad. We're using the one that you uh, like posted the link to in yeah, Zoom. I see notes about myself and this is Hank and the Ethernet, the Ethernet but uh, Blue Shield only has one name. So that's Which probably different, you're right. Yeah, so, no, I've got the same with Braun. Uh, okay, I just added my name. Right, oh, sorry. Got two oh, yeah, no, account. okay. That, sorry, this is the one that I sent out with the link. Daniel, did you create a different Etherpad? I created a different one. I think so. You've got notes, IETF interim. Oh, that's the official one. And I've created one. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Apologies. Um, that must have been, that must be the official one. And I created one separately. So I messed this up. All right. Put them wherever you want. And, and um, let's, let's do the official one. Cause that will be the one that they archive for it. Where's the official one? Uh, Can we say you, you are here or? 
Why don't I put the link to the official one at the top of the other one? <laughs> We're doing well. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, here we go. All uh, right. I just pasted a whole heap of stuff at the top. Oh, okay. All right. I'm in. And then I'll cut the bottom off there. Oh. I'm just transferring everything across from the other document. There we go. Awesome. Now we're all on one, all on the same page, as they say. That's interesting. Okay. And the page we're on is page number five of the slides, which is Event Pub. <sighs> so the action was that Mike to update draft, have an initial data copied into the event, and URI is to be a way to get updated data. This was from the privacy evaluation. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I gotta say, I didn't, didn't get that done. It, it, I ran into some difficulties when I was just thinking about it. Um, and, and it's sort of, uh, I mean, yes. That was the main outstanding thing I, I realized. I hadn't, um, I hadn't done that. Now I, now I'm thinking about it. I guess it needs a different, a different, um, yeah, I'll, yeah. it turns out, yes, it, I think I, I looked at this and decided I, I got, I just got bogged down with it. It sort of means having two things, doesn't it? You've got to have the value and a URI, um, which is not, not the way things have been typically. And, and it, is that, I mean, every time we've got a URI, we're going to do that. It just doesn't seem, just doesn't seem altogether right to me in the end. Yeah. Um, I guess we should discuss that again here. There's, there's two things, right? There's consensus amongst this group, and then there is um, convincing. See, this, 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 kind, this kind of thing has, has always has come up in the past, and and the general agreement that that I, I, I recollect with people, and not just the ITF, you know, in various places, is that well, you've got a URI, and you don't want to be uh, hanging around downloading this thing there's always the um, possibility of, of caching it. So at least we can deal with the offline mode in, in that way. Yeah. There is the issue of whether you want to download it at all anyway. Yeah, um, of course. And that's just a general, uh, just a general issue. Should you just go and download a URI? It doesn't matter whether you're going to down download it to make it work for offline work or whether you're going to download it so people can look at it. The, the, the answer is probably you ought to be asking them whether they want to download this thing. But then I get to think, well, what's the difference between that and say a web page that's full of links and things that uh, you don't ask people generally. I mean, there's some places say, oh yeah, you're going to go to another site if you click on this, but that's the exception rather than the rule. You click mm -hmm. on stuff and it might take you to another site. Um, I, 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 I sort of struggled with the difference between the security so this, implications for this and the security implications for almost anything we do these days. This was URIs for stuff that was embedded in potentially for, for auto displaying images, yeah. that kind of thing, I suspect. There's images um, and, uh, and you know, things sort of deal with that in the, in, the, in the current sort of male client world is, you know, do you want to view the HTML or do you want to just have some sort of raw text representation of it and then you you say yeah i want to see the site and you and it displays the full content um and it's sort of a generic um 
answer to the problem of how you deal with URLs. Mm. Rather than um, trying to deal with it on the, almost on a per property basis. Um, yeah, we sadly we don't have Barry here to, because he was the one who's who's got the. Well, it, it is a concern, um, and, and but it, it's. I mean, it, and I going. I was going back to think about well, how do we deal with say, um, I, uh, you know, as a result of looking at the JS calendar stuff, and how do you deal with contact? Um, and in 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 the five five four five, the contact is just a text field. Where if you've actually got a um, a real card of some kind, that's obviously a a, um, a better thing to be to be referring to because it's more likely to be up to date if if changes have got made like the phone number or, or whatever. Um, the fallback is to just um, in this calendar, it's just turn into a data URI mm. and shove it in there, which I don't know is necessarily any better. You may just be hiding the the offensive content inside a data URI. Yeah, often with things like contacts, that it's messy. You kind of want to know what the value was at the time, as well as being able to get the updated one. Because if the if the contact's missing, then you don't have the information anymore about what was there. And certainly for archival purposes, you need to know what it was at a point in time. But for publishing for an event, which is now, and maybe you don't care about all that stuff. <clears throat> yeah, and and I, I guess the contact thing have maybe made me sort of re rethink it. I mean, maybe maybe the best approach is to is to um, it is to have a um, the names keep getting used up. I was thinking of having a source URI, but then the name is used in other places for for something slightly different. But maybe have something which uh, always indicates the source of what you got, and then have the the thing itself encoded in some form, but it's probably going to be a data URI because the form, it would be the same format, which I don't see as is, is hugely different from caching, but it's, you know, um, if, if, if you want it embedded in the contact, um, we either end up building ourselves complex properties that don't quite match the thing we're pointing at or we say well this is a v card either it's on, on the end of a uri or here's a data uri with a v card encoded in it hmm. i presume the original security concern was to do with um like leaking ip addresses and that kind of thing when you connect is that right i'm trying to remember yeah that, that Seems to, that's my recollection as well. I'm just going to pull up the. Uh, I think it was a very generalized comment about following URIs. Um, yes. I mean, again, the it depends on the context accessing it. Um, you know, at, at Fastmail, we proxy everything that's connecting to an external server, so it, whoever it is only gets knows that someone from Fastmail connected. They don't know which user. They don't know where the user is or anything like that. But yeah, that's, that's, that's dependent that, on the you know service to be able to provide that. It's not inherent. Yeah, and my my response to the to the thing, I think we, we never really. Uh, I think we sort of came to some agreement on that. On that was that this is such a general problem in in the stuff we deal with. I mean, it turns up URIs turn up everywhere, and and the the the, the issue of handling things like this really belongs in almost a separate, you know, RFC, information law otherwise, that tells you exactly how you should handle this kind of stuff, or at least gives you a lot of, of ideas such as that. Uh, some of the issues of having these things, as you say, is maybe somebody could be tracking you by having the thing, um, just downloading stuff. Um, yeah, all the, the notes back in the minutes were from the last meeting pretty much covered all of this. Um, I don't think we ever, we didn't, we didn't actually uh, get to put together any form of meeting or thing to, yeah. to come of this. And, and my, my point at that stage was, um, is, is 
it, it just seemed, I'm not saying I've been, that this particular draft was being picked on, but how many drafts have we had and, and, and specs have we had that have exactly this in them? They have yeah. a URI of some kind pointing at something. And yeah, Event Pub happened to be the one that popped up that uh, where Smith thought about it, but I'm not sure it's the best place to actually resolve the issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Unfortunately, Barry's got the the deciding vote on on whether it goes ahead or not with this so uh, we need to convince him well um what i suspect is that we maybe we prob probably have to talk to him uh, yeah. unless we we reach an agreement um because i agree with what you're saying mike um and um I guess the, the context was um, all the phishing and uh, so I, I don't know if they want to use the, um, the, 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 the calendar entry to, to have people clicking on the website or because if you don't download it, then uh, it means you're clearly tracking the person. So um, I, I, I think we, it's, as you, as you mentioned, it's, um, it's something that has been probably picked up and um, we don't want to have the general debate into that document. So we should try to, to see what makes the AD happy on that for that draft and uh, eventually commit in, in handling this more general thing uh, in another document. But uh, um, I think it's gonna be hard to find a solution we're sure of for that given draft. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if if we, I mean, I'd happily get on another call specifically for for this issue. Can we maybe um, suggest that URLs shouldn't be automatically downloaded unless you have a setting in the app or something? Yeah, and that the default should be off. Yeah, because this sort of mimics what email clients do these days. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. Yeah, that, that, that would be fine. Uh, to at least and some fine. generic text, you know, that otherwise this is very similar to web pages. Actually, I think it will probably will help people. Yeah. Um, at least to sort of have a mental model of how they think about this. Or uh, to emphasize this is not particularly different. And, and I, I think also talking about... Uh, Fishing and tracking if the URLs is being automatically referenced to reference. That's also probably a good text to add. Okay, I'll take I'll take a look at it. I'll add something of that kind. I can I can always put a pointer in each of the things where there is a URL and say, you know, see see the security section and then put something bigger in that. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, yeah. okay. Uh, I'll 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 do that and see how that works. And then I'll ping because, yeah, again. if you suggest some text, at least we can wordsmith it as opposed to, uh, you know, keep having this discussion in abstract. That might yeah. be easier. Yeah. And, and if we had a separate document that, that covered these things, if it was information, something we could update, I guess, at least we could, um, when these things popped up, we'd have something to point people at. Say, so refer to this. Sure. Okay. All right. I'll... Uh, I'll deal with that. I think that's the only thing that's really outstanding on the on the event pub thing, uh, unless except that I've started to get bothered about it in relation to JS Calendar. So, yeah, we'll talk about that in the JS Calendar section, I guess. Yep. Unless there's something you think needs to be changed in event pub. To be well, then calendar. Then maybe then maybe as as I've been looking at the the mapping issues, so that I, I think we can we can deal with the mapping issues and see how that affects. Um, uh, event pub, if at all. All right. Um, next, let's talk about JS Calendar. So that we, we're skipping ahead a slide. Now back on the slides, we're going all the way down to slide seven. So. Who wants to talk about this? Well, I guess guess since I suddenly became active on this, I'd better 
see where I got and why and how. So when um, I yeah, I've been sort of engaged on other things, and I I started on um, building myself uh, a a a library to do um, sort of the equivalent to iCal for J, but you know, but J's calendar, but not quite like I not. But anyway, sort of a library, and I built all that part with the all the intention of of moving on to um, getting a JMAP implementation going. So the first thing I was going to try and do is actually get this stuff uh, coming out through feeds and um, uh, and, uh, and and CalDAV perhaps, and uh, with with the intent of trying to get some exposure for it. Um, because I think it'll be a really good thing for the people who take feeds out of our system. And but the next step, uh, I realized. It was really I had to convert this stuff from my internal representation, which sort of follows the iCalendar model, but isn't, um, and convert that into into um, JS Calendar. And the first two properties I came across just immediately posed difficulties, and it's been the case ever since. Every every property I've looked at, there have been it's raised questions. And if it's raising questions for me, it's going to raise questions for anybody. It, it, it's, and that's when I came, you know, after, after I started early on, I realized we have to have a, a very explicit uh, mapping with lots of musts and um, as to how you get from I counted a JS calendar and back again. Because if, if we want, you know, um, if we want people to migrate to using JS Calendar, iCalendar is not going away. You know, ten years down the road, we'll still be doing iCalendar, and people have got iCalendar embedded deeply in their system. Many people, it's the data model they use internally. Um, it's just not going to go away. It, it's a primary part of what we do. So the so somebody's going to convert this stuff, send you J Calendar, iCalendar. JS calendar, I calendar, and you're going to have to convert it back. So you're going to have to know exactly how they did it, or at least how exactly how they should have done it. So that was that was the motivation behind this thing that we can't be just saying implementation dependent anywhere. And and it does affect the JS calendar draft in in a number of ways. Uh, they're not major changes, I think, but they're 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 changes all the same. You know, the the issues that I'm coming across are, um, you know, when we talk about. Uh, I probably need to look at some of my uh, my own notes if I can find them. Are things like um, Where, where, where we? I think, I think. Um, where do you put the location property for one? For example, and how, do, and how do you identify if you've got more than one location? How do you identify the one that is the one that is the location property from the iCalendar object? We can't have it converted one way and then come back again looking different. That, that's all, and we, well, that turns up in a number of places that there are. Um, Places where we have, I can't worry, is the rel type or whatever. Um, I think that they're saying the same issue turns up with contact with 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 their geo. I think contact was another one, wasn't it? Which, uh, that um, we can't do without a contact. It's absolutely vital. In in an event publication, everybody has a contact, and yeah, the, down the road it'd be great to have multiple contacts, but we can't be. It, it just has to work so that when you convert backwards and forwards, we know exactly which where the contact is. The spec just doesn't decide, allow for that. Sorry to interrupt you. I this I don't understand which contact you are talking about. The contact property in iCalendar. There, there has to be a one-to-one -one conversion backwards and forwards. You have to be able to identify exactly where it went and how to get it back. And it's true of, of a lot of things. How, I mean, how do we do with it? I mean, not that many people use the geo, but just because not many people use it, 
when you scale it up, it's still a lot of people. Mm. Um, it, yeah, so for it, Gio, go on, yeah. yeah, just as an example for this, I agree with very most what you're saying. Um, uh, for Gio, as we already discussed, you, you can describe it in a location as it is defined in GS calendar, but it's again a good of example of those where uh, I calendar only allows one of these properties to be set, whereas GS calendar allows multiple instances of this set. And uh, this is an, uh, indeed an issue that we encounter at various places in the mapping so far. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking for a, a you know, or suggesting that we can we can manage a, um, a a a perfect mapping. No, but that's we, not what I'm saying. But I'm, I agree with you that um, at least um, at the moment, for example, in the Cyrus IMAP implementation, we are using heuristics to identify which of these JS calendar locations, for example. Is the most is the one that most properly fits onto the I calendar location, and which locations are these that we put into an X location property or what else? Yeah? And um, this is indeed showing up at different places uh, in the mapping. So at least there should be a, a good or a hard rule which of a set of candidates for the respective I calendar property should should be the one elected, so so to say. Yeah? Yeah, I, and it's you know it's it's sort of different when you're just just generating i calendar out of bureau. If, if you're starting off with a JS calendar model and you you need to export this, um, but when it when it comes back at you after having perhaps been modified, being converted back to JS calendar, modified, and maybe somebody added another another location and then sends it all the way back to you again, how do you know which one was the geo to start with? The way you do it is, is there has to be something in that location that flags it as being the geo property initially. I mean, if, if there is none and you've got a bunch of, of, um, of locations, then that's fine. That's probably something that never set the geo property in the first place. But we just need a flag that says this is the geo property. And, and when you convert from iCalendar to with a geo property set into, and you, you, build a bunch of locations. I mean, technically it's easy. It's, we're not talking about something that's difficult, but we just have to know. And, and, and this, that turns up, that kind of issue turns up all over the place. You know, the contact, we, we, I mean, contacts are not even allowed for in, in the current spec. Yep. They have to be a participant. But how do we know which participant is? That's, that's where the tie back to event pub turns up initially was I, I um, how do we represent the contact well we represent the contact as a participant and then we start having to introduce a few of the participant properties that weren't in there like the the participant type so that's that's why I say there's a there's a there's the, there's a two-way thing going on here is that when I started looking at it, well it looked like I need to, I can't remember the changes I, I realized I need to make a change to event pub to to um, to make this work, but I think we need to use the participant type, which doesn't exist in, in JS calendar. The assumption is they're all attendees. Yeah, so as I said, I'm, uh, I'm very much in favor uh, of uh, defining a clear set of rules as in, in, in a mapping uh, RFC for mapping between iCalendar and JS calendar. Um, as we also already discussed, I wouldn't want to have that be part of the GS calendar spec. It should be a separate standard. I think we agree to that, or if not, please let me know. Um, and and but thirdly, um, I would very much not like to um, bake into the JS calendar format um, translation guidelines with iCalendar. It seems, I mean, I know it's a, I know the real world pragmatic uh, thing why we wouldn't why we would some 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 guidelines here or some some tools but in the other hand i really wouldn't want to mix these formats so closely um, because basically it would mean that js calendar they should be really two data different data formats and um uh, not necessarily yeah 
I, I, I don't think what I don't think what I don't think I, I, I agree with your point. We have to we have to be able to move on, but we also have to be able to coexist for the for the next few yes, years. You know, it's a decade or so. We're going to have to coexist. And anything that is done in iCalendar from now on has to has to it's, it's the, it flips it around. It has to be compatible with what we're doing in JS Calendar. But we have to get to a, we have to be at a point now where we can do a, a reversible mapping as near as possible between the two. So if you start off with iCalendar, you can turn a JS Calendar, you can send that to somebody else, they can turn it back into iCalendar and get pretty close to what you actually started with. And, and, and it's not a matter of guesswork or, or heuristics or anything else. It's got to be in the data. And that probably means, it absolutely means changes to the current JS calendar spec to, to reserve certain rel types, to add some flags, to add types to the participant and so on and so forth. Then I don't think any of them are, are huge changes, but I don't think we can, we can just push the mapping off to one side and say, oh, we'll do that later. It's part of what we have to do. Otherwise, we're going to end up like we started off in CalConnect you know, over a decade ago. The whole reason for having CalConnect was the, the terrible interoperability problems we had. You simply couldn't send an event to somebody and have, it, have them understand what it meant. There were, there were problems all over the place. We don't want to do that again. And, and that's, the, that's the, the, the danger of not specifying this properly from the outset. I think re reserving specific keys sounds totally reasonable. Um, do you, did you get to a list of what you think needs to be done? I've started building a, a list and, and, uh, <laughs> the problem is that every time I start thinking, Oh, this is going to be a, an easy one. I, I, I realized I'd missed a touch and I went back and did that a couple of days ago. And so he's, Oh, that's, that's really hard. It, it, the, the, I, there, there's another issue is that we've buried all, there's a, a um, we've buried everything inside link. And, and I just spent an entire day trying to implement, how would I deal with somebody who has an override where they've just removed an attachment? And now I've got to disentangle, you know, let's say we've got a bunch of images and, and attachments and all these other links and things. Now I've got to disentangle these things from that, that collection and build an override which looks right for, for what we're doing. And these are unrelated properties that we've buried inside link. You know, there's images, there's, there's whatever it is, and, and maybe we'll have to put some other stuff in there. So there are some issues over that. I think that we'd be a lot better off having an attachments property, even a JS calendar. It's a different usage. And then when you get a bit, the, this, once I started dealing with the overrides, the, the complexities of, of process, it's difficult. I mean, it's not, not sort of difficult. It's just you could spend an entire day implementing uh, just how do you do an override. It certainly defeats the idea of it being something simple to use. Uh, I, I can't follow your the specific example. So why would um, why would it make it more simple to if there would be a, an attachments property in addition to a links property, or whatever uh, to with with links inside it? it? Simply because their their usage is different. I mean, the, the likelihood is that if you've got say a meeting or whatever, and or it's an, uh, or an event going on over time, and you've got different. The, the chances are you, you might have a different agenda every meeting. You know, the thing may look pretty much the same from, from meeting to meeting, but you change the agenda. You got half yes, a dozen. I think Robert's point there is why is it, yeah, why is it harder? more difficult to, yes, if it's in a links property versus in an attachments property that seems basically the same code wise to me. It's not code wise because you've got to separate out the attachments from the links, you've got to rebuild a whole collection of stuff. That's, yeah. that's being used for different purposes. I mean, it's not. It's 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 how to how to identify all these changes for an override. It it's just more complex. An override is going to have to have the whole links property repeated just because you changed one one attachment. No, you do a patch. No, yeah, you patch the links exactly. And how do you patch a link? 
single. You would, uh, in, in, so in this example, you would have links um, slash the uh, link ID um, that you do not want okay, to be yeah, included. Sure, would. And you would write a null. So it would be one line in that case. Of course, if you, if you delete multiple links in an override, there will be some tipping point where it will be more compact to define the, the complete list of the, of the updated links. But basically, you can use either approach. Yeah. So two, two things. Um, we had a companion document with the GS calendar specification. And um, so I guess this document expired, but wasn't it the purpose of clarifying um, the, the conversion between the uh, iCal and uh, GS calendar? You yeah, yes, that's so. I think uh, I think we're all in agreement that that document's important, and possibly even we make that standards track rather than informational as we were originally uh, planning. I think the disagreement is on yeah, okay. how whether or how much changes would still be required to JS calendar, and whether to hold up the JS calendar well, spec waiting yeah. on that, or can we push ahead with this still? Well, well, here's 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 the I I I absolutely believe we've got to update JS calendar to some extent. For this to, to make this work and and I, I don't think we can we can avoid that I'm I'm I, I in, in, in my own mind I just don't think it matters too much one way or the other whether the thing is 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 one document or two people there you know there's enough people complain that they, they they don't like following multiple documents they'd like it in one but then there's people the other way around but it's fine I don't think that that's a big deal but I think the two are inextricably linked that's that's the problem. We 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 we've got decades of you know, a decade, sorry, years of 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 having to deal with this stuff. The likelihood is that almost anybody who wants to implement JS Calendar is going to have to do that mapping. There'll be a few people who have the luxury of being able to look at just JS Calendar. There'll be the people who maybe have a web page that they're trying to display this stuff on. That's it. Everyone else is going to have to do the mapping. And apart from that, if the two if if we're if we're reserving stuff in JS Calendar for the mapping, it's a little hard not. To, I mean, my only my only concern about, as I said, about not having it as a as a uh, embedded in the document is, it makes it easier for people to ignore it, and then just do their own mapping that doesn't work. But that's 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 my feeling on it. I'm prepared. To, I mean, I I'm not going to insist it be one document. I think it would be better as one document, but that's my opinion. And, but I don't think we can, we can um, uh, until we have substantially completed the mapping, I don't think we can say JS Calendar is done. That's my feeling. And, and, you know, we, I don't think this is, we're talking about years. It depends how fast people respond to any of the questions I put on the list. I haven't had a single response yet. So you need to get on there and start responding to some of these things. I mean, yeah, I could be wrong on some of the issues, but some, I know I'm right in some of them. So we need to resolve it. And, and, and I can do this. I'm trying to work through this thing to some extent in a piecemeal basis. And I started trying to implement the stuff one at a time and then thought this is gonna to be too slow. At least we're gonna make a good pass through every property. And uh, what I've been finding is the way to really um, run, figure out where the issues are is at least take 5545 and work through every damn property in there and try converting the examples. Because I keep running into problems as I do that. And I don't believe all my problems are illusory or anything else. I think they're real. But there are two, two things. One which is related to the model. So for example, something is missing and um, I'm not saying properties, but um, it's really related to the model. And one is how you convert, how you do the matching between those two. And um, I think, I, I have one, I mean, I have the impression that we, we stated that uh, we're gonna do two, two documents, so, I'd like us to keep that, um, to follow on with that decision we made. 
and the, to keep, I mean, the updates for the, I mean, uh, we, we, we may improve uh, GS calendaring, but uh, I'd like then the, the, the updates should be mostly related to the model. For example, we, we're missing something or in that model. But, so maybe the conversion can help into that, but um, I would like to keep those uh, translation and the model as two separate documents. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not going to push that. And, but I think, yeah, there are, there are, I, there's, I think your substantially JS calendar is, is going to work. If there, there is missing stuff, like say a participant type. Um, and then there's, there's um, things like reserving values for the mapping, which I think has to be in the, in the JS calendar spec. Um, yeah, I, but substantially, I think that's fine. I'll, I, I can, I can live with that. And the, the other way around is, uh, but um, if Alexei is here, um, we can have a version one for GS Calendar and improve that version. I don't know how feasible it is, but it's also we may we may agree we do something that we believe is stable and. Uh, candidate for a grade later. Um, that's um, I don't know how it could work. Also, um, it's tricky well, with the ITF model, isn't it? To to well, that's update. it is, and and that's why I said we need to have the version number and use it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we have a GS calendar version one, and then we do a version one dot one or, or yes, two. Yes, exactly. I and guess and it's an hour don't, of debate. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so how you how you in, increment, but uh, I, we shouldn't fall into the trap of doing what what I kind of did of having a version two and never changing it. I mean, we I I, I realized a, a week or so ago when I, I said we should have a version number and we should use it. Was I we, we we must spend half our time when we try and add another iCalendar property or a change to to iCalendar going on about backward compatibility. And it's just ridiculous. We end up, okay, you, you're supposed to ignore anything you don't understand. We can leave that in place, even in JS calendar. It, it's, it's fine. But we can't make a slight change to iCalendar because older clients will break or something like that. We'll end up in exactly the same position if we don't start doing versioning. And, and it, it's perfectly reasonable. In, in most other things manage to do that kind of thing. So Barry's I mean, just let me know that he's only got about 10 minutes more. Um, I messaged him to see if he could join because we didn't have Oh, yeah, yeah Barry's um, gone, yes. Um, so if we could just nip back to that for a little bit and talk briefly through the issue with Event Pub was to do with URLs being or URIs being automatically loaded and that the issue, security issues related to that and whether we needed to wait for a BCP to come out or not. The suggestion that we came to Barry before you arrived was that we could put something in the security section to say clients should not automatically download unless the user has turned on an option which must be must default to off um, and wondered whether that would be sufficient for you. Uh, I, I think it's probably the best we can do. We, we absolutely should not wait for a BCP on it. So don't do, take that off the table. That, 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 doesn't make sense. Uh, we probably should work on such a document, though. Uh, but yeah, I guess that suggestion is about the best we could do. I'm a little worried about an option to to tell the client to download all URLs or URIs. I would rather have Maybe, maybe at the should level, that's the best we should do. There might be, you might add a little more text to explain the issue with the, the security issue with downloading URIs and, re, and recommend at a non-normative level that the user be asked for each URI. Uh, the, the user be warned about each URI, you know, that this could cause yeah. unwanted side effects or harm your, your yeah. system. Yeah, or, or you to know, use I, some I, kind of whitelist. Right. Yes, whitelist would be good. So a little more text than that would be helpful. 
but yeah, I think that's all, that's really all that makes sense to do. The problem I'm I'm looking at is um, people embedding URIs that distribute malware, people embedding URIs that have that have one-time use issues where if a client downloads them without explicit action, it could use them up. I'm worried about URIs that cause side effects like um, purchase purchase one-click purchases or unsubscribes or things like that. Those are the sorts of things that I'm concerned about. So oh. a little bit more text than that, but yeah, that, that'll do it. Well, okay, so let me say, so I, so if I come up with some, if I come up with some text, and I, uh, I'll circulate on the list. And maybe, maybe we can, maybe it can be a little more than just you know a, a, a brief mention. Perhaps we can put it as a, uh, I don't know, as a subsection somewhere on on handling URIs. I, I think if we can put something in there, I mean, it's perhaps you know, v verifying the URIs to some extent before you download them, if you know where they're coming from, which I guess is what you're saying with whitelisting. And then if yeah. we can come up with some agreement, I'll, I can just circulate oh, yes. some wording. I think and then we uh, can... a warning of the, the issues that can arise, uh, a recommendation to, um, to have a whitelist uh, and to check with the user on things that are not on the whitelist. Yeah, something that would be. I'm not looking for pages. I'm looking for a couple paragraphs. But um, yeah, I think that would do it. Uh, please okay. see to me explicitly so I don't miss it when you put it on the list. Okay, I'll do that. Thanks. And yeah, sorry that this has dragged on for as long as it has. That we should have resolved this sooner. That's, that's okay. I, it was partly me not pushing it too well. So, um, I think I think it's a, the last real outstanding issue that we've got. So. Yep, and thanks for all the work on this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cool. All right. Do we have more to do back on JS Calendar? So, yeah, um, hi. This is Hank. Oh, sorry, Hank. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, was uh, um, procrastinating in any case. So, um, um, I'm here because I uh, basically literally am using LDEF and, and GUDDEF forever. And I saw the emission, uh, the development of the emerging draft that is uh, JS card or, or JS contact, as humans called, uh, basically the, the, the card part of the world. And um, so, as I was always, uh, the, the, so, so a little bit of my background, I'm 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 uh, from uh, from CDL, the concise definition data division language, and I'm I'm from. Uh, from doing basically these uh, ITF versions of the things that some people call schemas for JSON and, and uh, binary equivalent that is a superset that is the CBOR. And, and I'm a big fan of, of uh, um, ICAL and uh, ICARD. So um, I'm, I, I'm natively moved here basically because I am interested in this work in general personally. And then I saw, oh, you're doing JSON definition. And then I was trying to, to read and understand them. And uh, with everything that's just written in English text, I was like, okay, maybe you would be interested in having this in a data, formal data definition language type of way that uh, would accommodate both JS Calen, uh, JS Cal, as is JS Card. And uh, because I, I assume that you uh, would uh, have uh, better readability and a well-defined structure that you can validate and create by, so the construction part. Um, um, the messages that are basically JS card and JS cal. Uh, at the moment, you have a very complex and sometimes a little bit ambiguous. I, sorry, only my uh, ten my I uh, read them one. Uh, I created a single CDL for card, and and I tried to to make sense of it. So it's a little bit ambiguous uh, wording there. And so my question to this group here, before I write anything just out of the blue to the list. And by the way, hi Alexei. Um, uh, I would like to ask, are you interested in having a uh, um, accommodating, a corresponding appendices with these uh, uh, documents that would uh, provide you with a, a data definition language definition uh, of the format that is basically JSCAL and JS -CAL? I guess the short answer for me is yes. But um, <laughs> how, how it's... Um, 
um, packaged, I guess, is uh, not up to me. Well, Robert and Neil are the authors on this one. So, in general, in my opinion on uh, any um, any machine readable description always is good. Um, but I, I mean, I, I don't know if this would need to be put into the spec or. Um, yes, I also haven't made up my mind where, where this should go. But the effort itself definitely is is of, of value, of course. I think this gets back to my. Uh point I made earlier on is it'd be, it'd be great if the ITF um, didn't treat these um, documents as, uh, as immutable when they really aren't. And we could just bring one out down the road and say this is the document and, uh, and we could add things like that as an appendix um, and people would always get pointed at the latest thing. Uh, may, maybe, um, maybe we could help with CalConnect and package all this stuff together in a way and point at these things. Mm. There's, a, there's a huge discussion going on in the ITF about immutability of documents. They're not immutable. There's errata, yeah. so they're not immutable. But yes. Yeah, and there are two ways to add uh, stuff to things. Uh, um, the, the data definition could include extension points. For example, I saw that uh, by definition, some of the uh, major items, I think metadata items it was, uh, and the text highlight these uh, maps or these objects, JSON ops, sorry, JSON objects are to, uh, intended to be extensible and have more uh, keys in them later on. And this can be accommodated today via the formal definition. So there can be uh, additional RFCs that just create extensions to this. Or if you have a fundamental change, you can change the basic structure. The, the history of, of um, JS Calendar is going to be exactly the same as the history of iCalendar in that respect. In that, mm. um, we have been constantly adding stuff. And this is what I referred to um, earlier with versioning, is that we add properties to um, iCalendar, or we add parameters to iCalendar properties, uh, or we change, or we try and add new value types, which is the worst thing you can possibly do in iCalendar because there's no versioning. And, uh, and everything we do, we, we have to worry about breaking the uh, older clients, which will just swallow the stuff and then explode. Um, so we've got to assume that JS Calendar will be extended in, in very many ways as, as time goes on. And, and any, any specification has to allow for that. And that's where versioning would, would help if you had a version that you knew explicitly what was allowed in that version uh, by the spec, then you could just parse it with the, the appropriate version. And uh, anything you didn't understand would just get shuffled off to the side as being stuff you ignore. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if you really need versions for that due to the, uh, um, if you have fine grained extensibility and, and using objects. Objects, I think, are, are somehow in the lane of uh, you might not need versions here. So you can just omit items you don't know. And uh, the items you know, or basically due to extensions that you know, uh, you can you can have uh, provide a uh, procedure for. So uh, yes, while I assume versions look like a good idea always, I assume that there will never never be a single version being deployed, and therefore it creates a, a little bit of um, yeah a rift or fraction or something like that. So so if you have a system in place that take, takes care of extensibility without versioning properly. Uh, just by having modular extensibility features uh, that might uh, reduce the threshold a little bit. It's not, it's not the extensibility. It, adding, adding new stuff has always been relatively easy. You can add a new property, you can add a new uh, component or whatever, though mm -hmm. the component blew up most of the libraries that, uh, that were around. It, it's when you, when you make changes to existing um, properties and in JS calendar it, it changes to existing objects that if if um, we we have something that's incompatible uh, uh, to some extent or an assumption changes we realize we've got a problem and need to fix it um, well, we could have fixed if, that in our calendar too just by um, but say if there's a problem somewhere in attendee just replacing it with something called participant instead 
and you either use participants or you use attendees, depending on whether, which version. Well, I, I, I did that, and it's a pretty imperfect way of dealing with it. But yeah, there, there are ways around it, but they're always, you're always working around an issue that would have been much better dealt with by simply saying, this is version you know, X, and, um, and this is how you interpret it. I mean, the, the, the parsing the thing is one thing. We're not changing the structure, which it's, uh, it, it doesn't, that's not a problem. You can parse it all out and to, into the appropriate objects and things, but it's how you interpret what you've got is, is yeah. the problem. The issue is mm. if you have something that knows how to parse version 3.2 and version 3.3 comes along and it changes the semantics, you don't know how much it's changed the semantics until you go into semantic versioning horrors. And so you don't know how much of it you can still understand. Can you understand any of it or none of it until you get upgraded to a well, version that, 3.3 parser? Well, that's... If we change the meaning of a word or a named type or label or something, if we change the semantic meaning of that, then you really have to be very careful and create new documents. That is for well, that's, sure. Well, yeah. that's, that's why, why I, have... I don't think we really should have a version. Of, I think that why the you system that we currently have of letting you define new properties if you really have to is actually a better extension. It doesn't, it doesn't it's, and we have I don't think ever that, discussing these things because we don't have a version. I, uh, can you give me a specific example? I'll go back through the stuff, but we, the, Apple just adding the email parameter to attend these cause enough problems. Yeah, the this, main problem with iCalendar was the fact that you, it wasn't an object, it wasn't a component in iCalendar format for these things, and so you had parameters flying all over the place. But adding, uh, that's not a problem with JSCalendar because a lot of things are rich objects already, so you, a participant is a rich object. And yes, you can easily add extra properties to that. That is the whole point of the registry that is created at great length at the end of the document. So I didn't want to spark a extension version discussion. I'm sorry. I just wanted to provide more structured way to, to basically describe what you are defining right now. I think that the, the extension and version and whatever you want to do here will be expressed in that definition in any case. So now there's none. Maybe there will be some indication of a, I don't know, qualified name and maybe even a version of the thing you are revisioning here. Then, then that is fine. So my, my, my initial proposal coming back to that was uh, if you are interested in having a, a data definition language uh, specification uh, that goes along with JCal and JCAR, uh, I would be very happy to uh, help you here. So Excellent. thank I, you. Um, I have uh, some questions. Um, when do you think you could provide this? Um, am I saying analysis or formal verification? No, it's a it's a language definition. So I, will, I, I, I yesterday I, I by accident saw your draft because I'm looking at the upcoming meeting stuff, and then I was googling a little bit and I found uh, the the JS car contact. Um, the JS contact uh, thing. So I can paste, and it took me like three hours to create a specific uh, a specific definition. And I can paste the UI in the uh, in the chat window right now. Here you go. So this I wrote in the last two and a half hours, literally. So by reading the draft and creating the the data definition, it's, 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 uh, the link is a HackMD. Uh, I hope that everybody's fine with that. It's a cloud uh, web 2.0 thingy. And um, so it shows basically the, uh, the uh, how I would, this is just the first draft, it doesn't even compile yet. But uh, uh, I think it's rather complete. And this is how I would uh, create, for example, a digital definition that uh, highlights how a card group looks like, how they're using cards, what a yard card is composed of. I segregated the cards uh, into the uh, sections that are defined by the spec. Everything is a group in there, so it's a group of members pushed into the map and just a JS card and so on and so on. And at the very uh, bottom of the thing, I create all the string keys for the names I'm creating here because sometimes I think that uh, related to could be a related hyphen to, but you have the definition of uh, camel case, so it's related uppercase to. And so all these names that are actually going over the wire are at the, the top, uh, sorry, the bottom of the document. And uh, at the very top of it, it's, it's a basic structure. And as you can see, it's a very big document and it's taking basically a screen sized input here that is the whole definition of the thing. 
leaving out all the labels. That is uh, basically the frosting at the, at the bottom. So uh, I think it's very comprehensive. And, and, and yeah, as, as the name implies, it's concise. And uh, it helps you talk about things. And, and I uh, was, had a hard time to read the whole document. And uh, reading through it, basically, I was like, okay, when I read all this, I can also write the CBI just side to side. And that, that's the first input. And again, this took me like two and a half hours. So um, basically, um, what kind of, I mean, um, I, I suspect that um, when you're gonna do that, uh, you, you may find out some, uh, let's say, inconsistency with, with, with the model we, that is uh, written in the GS calendar draft. Am I correct? Yeah, you are using uh, uh, different ways to uh, group things. For example, the preferred contact language has is an iteration of arrays by definition, okay. and uh, the, the for example, personal info is an iteration of maps by definition. So you could homogenize this. Uh, you don't need to, uh, but you can see this basically if you look at this ad hoc. Uh, also, sometimes ordering. Yeah. What what is what is written in? What. This what is, is this? written in CDDL. This is a concise definition data language. It's RFC oh, okay. 8610. Okay. It was initially created for CBOR, but as CBOR is a superset of JSON, uh, oh. this also uh, is able to map. Uh, it's basically a streamlined JSON schema. JSON schema, unfortunately, use JSON for the schema language syntax itself, and therefore it's a little bit um, crowded. And this is just. Um, um, yeah, basically, this is for human between human communication to talk about how the structure looks like. It's for implementers, but in the end, you can also use it for creation and validation in the end. So, in any case, I think it's useful. Um, My question is, sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead, Robert. I was just wondering, is that... Um, are there other RFCs using that already? Uh, could we have an so would could we ha have yeah. a look at some RFC that uh, is using that? Yeah, well, uh, the only as so from the top of my head, the only RFC that is using this when it was not an RFC yet was uh, Cozy, the concise object signing and encryption thingy. That's basically the complement to, to Jose. Um, so Cozy uses CDDL notation, but only informationally because at the time of uh, RFC in Cozy. Uh, CDDA was not a RFC yet. So uh, there are other things in the queue, I don't know, software update for the Internet of Things, uh, concise software identifiers, um, um, ZenML, um, there's a lot of stuff that is using this. Uh, basically, I think uh, today there are about 40 drafts or RFCs that are using CDDA today. more drafts and RFCs apparently because just was RFC the other last year. So. <laughs> it, it seems like a good idea to me. The, the only risk I can see is that if there are inconsistencies between the pros version and the CDDL version uh, in the same document, then that will create errata. Yeah, I think you typically say which one is uh, uh, the man, well, the norm to Normative, yes. Yeah. And you can decide along the way. Uh, I, I'm not pushing this as this has to be the normative language. Um, I just feel I don't have to read the whole document. I just can look at the uh, schema-like structure and can, like in five, take it all in and then read the document. That is, for me, as a reader, very convenient. And it is not hard to read. You're using the same uh, brackets like the curly ones for map uh, objects and the, uh, the, the, the uh, edgy ones for, uh, for arrays and, and so on. So you can see all very intuitively, I think, how this is composed. And that helps. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I have to uh, drop out. So, but you have uh, an example. Again, I whipped this up in, in, in less than three hours. And uh, so I assume that even J. Cal will have uh, an estimated effort of like I assume two days and one day of uh, uh, um, I don't know, integrity checks uh, because as you said there might be inconsistencies between English prose and then that's this one here but but by, by my assumption is uh, it, it is not that hard 
Cool. Uh, it sounds like a good thing to have to me. Okay, I can and put something to the list in, uh, in a few days. Yeah, I think that's. Um, and do you think you could provide that uh, during May or June? Um, yes. Okay, that's that would be perfect. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I will do make a pick off uh, kick off. Sorry, <laughs> email uh, in a few days. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> something like that. And um, and um, uh, yeah, then we can start some open discussion. But I wanted yes, to uh, give you a heads up. I just wanted to barge in and like, hi, do this. That's like I don't know, weird. Yeah, thank Hank, and I'll, I'll also pass it on to Mario Lofredo, who is the co-author with me of the JS Compact Draw. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm late already, so uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. Great, thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, do we have any other actions for JS Calendar? Yeah, one thing for me uh, what, that I wondered, uh, recurrence rules, uh, I understood that they are at the moment, there are multiple rules per uh, defined, but uh, is that something again, going to be changed or discussed? Um, that's it, what I understood was, from the it meeting. Was single, it, was, it was single and turned to multiple because I, I um... yeah, but looking at the slides for this session, um, I understood this might be uh, sorry, I don't have to start. Ah, there they are. Um, need to change the current rules and take it back to the list. It is, is this? Yeah, that was an action from last time, so that's already been done. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. sorry. Um, yeah, so I guess we need to make sure that, that maps safely back to iCalendar as well, Mike. It, it, it does. I mean, that was that yeah. was the uh, part of the thing. Is that I know um, some places where multiple ones are used, so. And one last thing for me for Chase Kender. Um, apologies, Mike, I didn't get back to your emails yet. Um, I will answer um, to the attached example surely today, and I will follow up with the rest. Um, yeah, I mean, this, it's, it's just there's, there's, there's so many. I, I want to try and get them. Uh, I'm, I'm still trying to do the implementation and, uh, and try and move it along fast and not get bogged down in the, in the implementation details. So at least we can get a first pass through and clear out some of the easy things, at least. Um, I, I, I say, I don't, I don't think this needs to take all that long. And uh... Cool. Well, I, I'm well, also working on the Perl implementation. Not that long, but we have been discussing for an hour. <laughs> scales of months yes we are over time thank you for the reminder we should move on to the next things if we've, if we've got the discussion will continue on the list at least we haven't been going as long as event pub has no okay next on the list was i calendar series this is slide number six um, I guess at this stage, there's not much to say about it. It's pretty much where it was last time. I, I need to just get a, um, another look through it and then shove it out there. Cool. So my understanding is that uh, we are waiting for you to update it before reviewing it carefully. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically wrote the whole thing in one, one, one sitting um, in a hotel and uh, presented it, and, and uh, there's been no real substantial objections to it, but I, th I think Neil came up with something at some point. I may have incorporated that. I need to go back through my um, notes. But okay. um, I, I'll, I'll bring out another draft, so it's at least, you know, I presume it's expired at the moment. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's worth spending time discussing at the moment, especially as we're running late. Yeah. Okay. Uh, subscription upgrade. Uh, last action was Mike to define CalDev details better and new draft will be discussed in the list. Um, I can't remember whether I did that. Um, again, I guess I'll, I'll, I guess it says we can discuss it on the list. I'll, I'll check that and try and I'll go through this in, in the next few days and I can, I can push that out. 
I think we were pretty close to to agreement on most of the things. So so it's uh, I'll I'll see if I did that, and if not, I'll do it and then shove it out. Cool. So slide nine V alarm extensions. Ken was going to add geoprov text. Yeah, I updated that draft uh, back in I think January with some initial text. Um, don't know if it's going to be sufficient or not, but at least it's a starting point so we can wordsmith something better if, if need be. Um, and at Robert's request, I also uh, reintroduced um, the related to property and the um, snooze rel type for alarms. That was in a previous version of draft. We removed it. So I, don't, I, don't, I think it's fairly uh, non-controversial. Yeah. Um. I, I think I recall that um, uh, it traces some privacy related discussion. Is that yes. this one? Okay. Yes. So, um, I, I think the main the main aspect is uh, just not ignoring those privacy uh, issues, but um, uh, concerns. But uh, there is nothing more we can do about it. I mean, it's. Um, I think it's. I mean. Uh, my understanding was that we should uh, more acknowledge that there is a risk so that people using it or implementing it are really aware than trying to find out a solution of um, a very complex problem. Yes. So I, I added text to that effect. Uh, again, whether it's sufficient or not, I don't know. Um, it's for the okay. group to decide and, and I'll uh, update as necessary. I guess the question is, do you think it's it's at the point where we should just do a working group last call on what's there? Um, and if people come up with objections during that time? That's fine by me. I'm, I'm sure the security folks are gonna come up with something anyways. So um, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with going to working group last call. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Um, Daniel, do you want me to take this one as a shepherd? Are you, I mean, as you wish, I, I, I'm going to review it. So if it's ready for last call, I'm going to review it. So. Okay. okay uh, one question for V-Alarms. Um, I might be wrong. I just can't look at the ITF side for whatever reason at the moment. Um, Weren't there in previous versions the definition also for the CalDev properties for default alarms? And uh, I, as I understand, they are not in the latest draft, uh, the spec. Um, are they defined elsewhere? Um, uh, did I just get it wrong? Or were they no, we, we're, wrong? we removed it because of the difficulty in how a CalDev client notifies a server that it wanted to remove a default alarm. Apple does some wacky stuff by basically post dating or I guess with predating the alarm. So it uses like 1976, something, something, something. Um, it, it was kind of a hacky way to get around it. And it, it, a while ago, the, the group decided just to take it out, or at least we decided in CalConnect to take it out. Uh, the text is still in the, in the XML, so I, I can put it back in if we deem it necessary, but I don't see an easy way of getting around the, uh, the issues of, of how to elegantly remove a default alarm. Yeah, no, I don't might also, I also think we probably not should add it back. It also it has this issue with deciding on if, if uh, events that were created with default alarms that are now updated to some other value should also uh, be changed to include the new default alarm. So I think it's kind of messy anyway. I think my preference would be if, if, it, if we determine that we want to do something with default alarms, just make it a separate draft. I mean, wouldn't the whole problem with default alarms really uh, yet another backward compatibility issue? I mean, it, yes. it's not the idea of default alarms is fine, I think. And I think you could implement them quite nicely if you didn't have the iCount of baggage. So there's two issues. It's one of those things, isn't it? it we got two issues here. Is how do we how do we um, reversibly map an existing iCounter object and and let iCounter exist in its world of default alarms and have something in JS Calendar that works 
and, and that we can make sure the two don't screw each other up. Assuming it's something that, that recognizes JS calendar is doing default alarms properly. Yeah, uh, I took great pains in our implementation for a couple of months, uh, weeks to implement exactly this. Uh, so make it work with both what the Apple clients are doing over CalDev at the moment and supporting how it's defined in GS Calendar for now. I, th I think what I'm saying is we probably don't need to reintroduce the default alarm stuff in, in um, iCalendar, do we? Because it just doesn't work with old implementations. Hmm. No, in iCalendar, I don't think so. Cool. Uh, last thing we had on this list was vpol. No, it wasn't. Was it? No, sorry, this has been, this is pasted in from the other version of the agenda. Let's go back to the slides. This is what happened because we, because I messed up the. Yeah, you got server yeah. side subscriptions after that, uh, at least. Um, oh, and just kind of extensions. Uh, yes. vpol, um, I think I made most of the changes. I don't think we've uh, iterated yet. Um, I, I think the, the big change to vpol was to was to use participant instead of um, the voter property, and and it was a lot of changes. I, I I think I've made most of the changes. I need to make another check, and then and then Ken was going to help me um, move it along. So I'll uh, I'll endeavour to do that in the near future. Cool. All right, I've marked that down. All right, now server-side subscriptions. Yes, that, that was, VPOL was the last draft that's, uh, that yeah. is uh, accepted into the work. Oh, okay. right. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I think we, we've, this seemed, I mean, there are some people who really want this and it's a great idea and, and it was actually promoted by Apple. And then we discovered Apple already have an implementation of server-side subscriptions. Um, but then we've, we've not been able to get back to them to uh, discuss where we go with it and how it, how it um, matches up to what they already have. Um, but it's, uh, I, I, know, I know there are a couple of people at least who would really like to have this, um, but we haven't, we haven't gone any further with it. All right, um, what's the plan? Um, I think, I think that, I think maybe in the end we should just, we should just go ahead and, um, and we, we didn't have a plan. I mean, the plan was to try and, and communicate with Apple and see how, what we had, uh, uh, matched up with what they had and why did they raise it in the first place as if they didn't have it. Yeah. Um, uh, and of course with circumstances, we've, uh, um, we've not ha managed to have that discussion. Yeah. Um, Maybe we should just go ahead with what we've got. Uh, but it's, it's also possible they raised it before they implemented it. They took our early draft and refined it themselves. Mm. No, I, I well, I mean, it, it, from reading the Mozilla document, which I was it Mozilla? No, it wasn't. It was uh, one of Everett's documents, I think, is how to, to interact with these things. I, it, I thought the dating predated the the. Uh, th now it's quite possible that. Um, What's his name? Mine's gone blank. The um, the, the the client Apple client guy, who yeah. who raised it. It's possible he wasn't even aware that it existed as a service. You know, it was a server side thing, which is probably buried deep inside the the client. He probably never even realized it existed. I don't. It that seemed to be my thing. It, it it's possible they implemented it, but right, well, if we're lucky, maybe they they're bored sitting at home as well, and we can. Uh... I think we could contact. We could contact him. Yeah. And, um, All right. Well, maybe that's most things to do. Yeah. Always better to match up implementations if we can. Yeah. So the story is that you implemented something and you realized Apple got a similar service. Apple raised it and said they would like to have, a, um, it was the Apple client guy, at, I think it was back in Tokyo, said it'd be great to have server-side subscriptions. Okay. Because there are all sorts <laughs> of things you can do when you have server-side subscriptions, like even cache stuff, you only need to download it once. Popular things, you could have thousands or you know, millions of subscriptions to the same thing. 
So um, it, it's obviously a good thing. So we said, yeah, that's great. So we came up with a spec. And then sometime later, we discovered, um, uh, what, what the hell is the Everts um, thing that he was involved with? Uh, the, anyway, some calendar server implementation. They've got a whole lot of documentation. And part of it said, this is how you deal with Apple's server-side subscription. Mm. They, they've got it embedded in CalDAV. Mm. As I recollect. So I, I don't know whether he knew that they had a subscri they, they actually already had it. But um, the, I think the, uh, um, I, we, obviously we would like to be aligned. So I, I guess the thing to do is to ping them and, and okay. uh, see if we can get an answer as to, as to what's going on there. And just something, um, is it related to uh, MQTT or this kind of thing, the subscription? I don't know. Because what's that? Um, MQTT. It's um, you can subscribe to some feeds. I don't think so. No, it, I, I, just, I don't. No. Okay. No, it just looks tell, no. Just, just okay. telling the server. Here's a here's a page with an I a link. To yeah, it, it's it's yes. Yeah, rather having these things um, like webcal feeds and all the rest of it, or you you subscribe to this thing and and it's just downloaded maybe by the client or 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 whatever, but um, when people are all subscribing to the same things, it clearly there's a, an opportunity to um, make things work better. And also it does mean that um, it's in your shared, it's a shared thing. In, 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 you know, when you've got multiple devices, you can, you subscribe once okay. and, and, and it turns up in all your clients. So there are, there are, there are many benefits to doing it. Mm, okay. Yeah. And, and I think the work we did was basically to, to, uh, define the idea and then define how you do it in CalDAV. And I think we did it through some sort of, it make, um, what extended make call approach, I think. Okay, cool. Uh, we're down to five minutes left. So I think okay. we might just skip over the JS calendar extensions and I schedule upgrade, which were both, both kind of speculative future things. Um, and jump straight to the milestone review. So right now we've got, uh, milestones for sending the JS calendar draft. Obviously, JS calendar still got a bit of work to do. Um, when do we think we're going to have that ready to submit for real? I mean, I, I, I would if if we can really push on with the the mappings. I think a, a, a couple of months would cover it. So say I mean, June can... twenty twenty. Oh, is that what you've got down there? No, oh, yeah. it's currently no, you haven't. 2019. Oh, that's something else. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm working from the bottom up. Oh, oh yeah, so you are. Okay. Uh, um, VLM, we've basically said we will submit hopefully next month. So I'll put that as May 2020. Uh, scheduling controls. That was my thing. I have let that lapse. We didn't even talk about it. There we go. I will get back to that. I, I suspect it's going to be very trivially boring. It's basically just sending scheduling enabled. No, is the only bit that I think is really worth keeping from that. And that's, that's just adding one header to CalDev. So I will do that. One more uh, header. One more header. Submit vpol document. That's going to be later. That's going to be later. It's um... what do you reckon? It's oh, probably fall, yes, probably fall time. Yeah, I was going to say somewhere. somewhere Octo October. Cool. So, mm -hmm. Let's uh, have a deadline at least. Yep. Uh, calendar series. It's currently set for June. What are you um, There'd be no substantial changes. So it's possible that, I mean, I think uh, I covered the changes. I can go back and, and check, but it's probably, it, maybe June's fine. Cool. 
And are there have, any you, other... have you implemented that at all? Partially. Um, so we have, we I, have a little bit of experience with it. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized that um, in the, in the event, in, in uh, my system, I could actually just switch to doing that. So I'm sure most people would not notice. I, I can always export as a, as a recurring event if I, if I needed to. But um, so, so yeah, I might try and um, see whether I can um, actually get it running live. All right, subscription upgrade, we don't have an, anything for at the moment. Do we want to set a, a milestone on that? Um, it's always worth having a deadline, isn't it? But it's not, mm. it's not urgent, but, um, we could, we could leave that to the fall as well, I guess. Stick that in October. Cool. Um, and the last thing that we haven't discussed yet, and this was for server side subscriptions at the moment, um, that draft is not yet accepted as a working group document. Um, do we want to Sorry, I, I sorry. Can we go back? Can we go back to the previous one? I, yeah, yes. I, I heard server side subscription, but you were talking about subscription upgrade, weren't you? Yes. Sorry. Yep. So, oh. Um. Yeah, there's almost nothing to do with that. Um. Make it July, so not everything is in June. Cool. Uh, sorry, I, I uh, yes, I <laughs> I heard the wrong thing, and I. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Server side subscriptions. I think that's the one where that, that probably is, is October because we need cool. to try and, and make some have some contact with uh, Apple and, and the rest of it. All right. Um, we need to also uh, formally adopt that as a working group document. So, do you want me to to do an action to to uh, have a call for adoption on that? What do you think, Ken? I mean. <clears throat> My recollection is that Apple's current implementation was pretty close to what we, we came up with without even looking at it. Yeah, I, I say if, if we make a call for adoption, it, what we have now is, is a starting point, and if we have to modify it to be okay. compatible, I think so, we're yes. fine. And maybe it'll help push Apple to respond. Yeah, to that's, um, that's what I'm thinking. Um, um, we don't have to, to have the draft finalized and maybe that's going to speed up uh, <laughs> the commitment of uh, other people to have it adopted. So we should do that maybe right now. Cool. Um, I'll do it, well, later today, my time, but it is one, it's uh, <laughs> half past night now. So I think Neil and I will both be calling it a day at this point. That, that's the end of our time. Um, Anything else before we sign off? Nope. Be safe, everyone. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Thanks, everyone. Nice meeting. Thank See you. you. See you next time.